right, it's time to put together the two Jay-Z. So I don't know if you guys are aware, but last week I attempted to put together the two Jay-Z bottom end, and the piston rings that Hastings sent me were so far out of spec that there's no way I could even use them. So I had to go with the tried and true NPR rings. I waited a whole extra week to get them, but now they're here. And I just got done specking them out in the cylinders to make sure that they're actually the right specs. And they are. So now it's time to put them on the pistons and then install the pistons into the block. I have no idea how this happened, but apparently I don't have my piston ring pliers. I, I, I had them, now they're gone. So let's go to Northern Tool and get another pair. All right, let's find these piston ring pliers. There it is. All right, back to the shop. They gave me a $5 off coupon. Hell yeah. I know it still looks like a boat to you guys, but man, I just get so excited every time I see the Mark II now. It just looks so good. With the whole rotating assembly assembled inside the 2JZ block with fresh piston rings, rod bearings, and main caps all specced out to clearance, it's time to move on to the cylinder head. Before we go ahead and assemble the cylinder head, I'm going to take you through the journey that it went through before coming back to me. I sent this down to Texas to my good friend Max Galleon, and he went ahead and cut in new valve seats, cut new valves, and pocket ported the exhaust and intake valves. So we're going to take you through that now, and then we will see you back here in just a minute. What's up guys, it's Max. I've got Zach's 2JZ head here. We're about to go through this. Um, it needs some serious port work compared to the beams that I'm used to. So if you come up here and look right in here, we can see, let me grab my flashlight. You can see the casting on the back side is nice and smooth, but this side, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it. Right down on that bottom lip, there's a serious flat to angled area. Now that flat to angled area is just bad for flow. With turbo car like a 2JZ or turbo engine rather, um, it doesn't matter all that much, but any sort of performance gain we can get will be noticeable because with forced induction, you kind of just, everything is amplified. Um, the intake has it too, but we're just gonna clean those tight turn radiuses up. Um, do a little blending on the sides, and this thing should be good to go back to Florida. So, I've got it all down to valves, which Zach disassembled and shipped to me like that. So we've got these, we've got these, we're gonna wash them, but I'm gonna measure the stem height so that we are able to return it to as close to factory when we put the new valves in, or what it was at, because that's what these were shipped to, and then we will go from there. So stay tuned and in about a week, this will look brand new. So Zach's 2JZ is about to get its seats cut. You can see that these seats have water pitting and they just very, aren't very defined. So this will cut to a finished job. Just give it a second and me and this machine will get it done. So here we have the first seat that I cut and see how it looks a lot shinier than that seat so I adjusted the valve angle to get it right on the edge you can see that black line on the edge the dark blue I guess so this seat placement oh, focus the seat placement gives me a better chance to give you a more open throat which will help flow and then of course this will get ported to match
aggressive I couldn't add any extra throat angles and the top angle already has a good flow so we'll just be going straight to porting from here So we can see here, this one has still has that, see that flat right there? And then you come over to this one, and it's still physically there, but it's been rounded off in a way that airflow won't be hampered by this. This flat to curve causes a turbulent riff, where this one has just a nice, easy flow so the air won't get turbulent. Um, that's the whole point of porting. Alrighty guys. So I just finished all the short turn radiuses for the exhaust. We can see if you come in close, this light might be blowing out the shot, but we've got some serious flow improvement. There's no, no straights anymore. It's all just a one nice even curve. So we are good to go on those and it's on, we're gonna do the, uh, the bowl section of the intake here next which there's not a whole lot of work to do there's on the inside of each of them there's uh there's a, a, a decent sized lip but that's going to be a quick quick little burr down and then we'll flip the head over and do the rest all right so now that we're in the middle of building the 2jz i just wanted to take a minute to open up this package that i got from a subscriber on the channel zanad has been following the channel for a couple years now he's a pretty big fan of the content from what i can tell and he sent me this box for my birthday and as a shop warming gift so let's open it up and see what he sent over all right let's see i got the jay-z head right here in front of me so I'll just try to open this up where you guys can see it and there's ample lighting it honestly blows my mind that somebody would appreciate the content so much that they wanted to send me a box. I'm really excited to see what's in here, honestly. Alright, let's see. Oh, looks like we got some Hot Wheels. Oh, this is sick. We got an 88 Honda CRX. Delivery on that's really, really cool. Let's see what else do we got here. We got a Datsun 510 wagon. That's sick. Let's see. We got a 98 Prelude. Look at that. Dude, these cars are sick. We got a 91 Mazda Miata. This is right up Brandy's alley. Might have to give this one to her. I think she'd probably like this one. Let's see, we got a 2023 Nissan Z. That's awesome. I would drive one of these. Would you guys drive the new Z? If, if I could get one in manual, I would definitely drive it. What do we got? The 89 Mazda RX-7. Look at this thing. That is sick. That's one of the builds I can't wait to do, honestly. I got the uh, the S2 turbo hood for it, just like this car has. You guys want to see the F FC build? I got a BN kit for it, too. I really want to do that soon. We got a 95 FD. Look at that. That's like a dream car right there. You guys, you guys know that I made it as a content creator when I'm able to put together my first FD. I can't wait to do that. And then here's the here's the big part of this box. Look at this. He sent me these 1080p action cameras. They're like GoPros. This is sick, and it comes with the, the mount and everything. Look at that, he sent me two of these. Zanad, thank you so much for the gift. This means the world to me. Really, I'm gonna find a way to put these to use. I got two GoPros, but when we go drifting and stuff, like you can put mounts for the GoPros anywhere on the cars. You can put them on the dash in the car. Definitely gonna find a, a way to use these and utilize them. Dude, thank you so much. Now let's get back to the video. 
So now that we got the whole 2JZ GTE bottom end assembled, it's time to move on to the cylinder head. I just got in my GSE powered valve seals and I'm about to install them onto the cylinder head. With all the valve seals installed and the entire valve train assembly installed, minus the buckets and the cams, now I can move on to specking out my bucket shims. So I went ahead and put the cams in the cylinder head, as you can see here, and I'm just rotating the cams around so I can check the valve clearance with these feeler gauges. So when we're looking for the lash clearance on these cams and on the buckets, we're looking for a 0.25 to 0.35 millimeter spec range. Um, so I've already specced out all the exhaust ones and some of them are a little tight and some of them are a little loose So here we go. We've got 1 through 12 and as you can see there are ones that are 0.432 millimeters, right? And that's way larger than 0.35 and we've got 0.406 and then we've got some that are really small like 0.203 that one is way too thin and these ones are way too wide now the next thing I can do is I can measure the actual size of the shim and then I can do a calculation to figure out what sizes I need to get to replace them. So I'm going to figure that all out after this video ends but before the video ends I'm going to go ahead and spec out the intake side and see what those are. Here that a lot of the valves on the intake side are out of spec I think only like this one that one's in spec but that's way too tight like you're gonna want to have that up at like 0.18 to 2.2 millimeter the 0.25 is fine but that's also the the far end of spec so you're basically looking at 4 and 3 being on the minimum and the maximum side of tolerance which you, you really don't want so my goal is gonna be to dial all these in to between 0.18 and 0.22 millimeters on the intake side. That way I don't have any clatter in the valve train. It sounds good. All the valves are opening equally. Um, knowing my, my, I don't wanna call it OCD because it's not OCD, but that's what people nowadays try to call something like this. I'm gonna try to get them all as close to the same number as possible because that'll make me feel good, right? So if I could target like 2.0 since it's between 1.0 and 2.2 that's probably what I'll try to do but apparently there's like an equation or something I can do to figure this all out but I'm gonna figure that out and you're gonna figure out what I did next video because I'm gonna have to order stuff and I'm gonna have to you know check specs again and take the cams in and out etc but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video let me know what you think about the engine build below if you have any opinions on uh, what your favorite type of content is what your favorite type of flow of content is just let me know um, I want to make what you guys want to watch. So have a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.